such as resolving local disputes, engaging with the security apparatus, law enforcement, and the military in ensuring peaceful coexistence of their domain, sanctioning errant subjects, etc. With these beautiful roles, why are the traditional rulers seeking for a constitutional role? that question. I'm actually one of those who does not particularly think that that is altogether necessary. <laughs> Many of my colleagues do think it's necessary. We all have differences in opinion. For myself personally, I've had a role since 727 BC. I've had my role with my people. I've continued to have my role with my people. My name is Princess Nora Kobundu from African Union Development Agency, Nairobi. Your Highness, very good to see you and to have you speak to us. It's motivational, it's inspiring. But I want to ask, what's the traditional council role in bringing back morals and values on our young people? Secondly, how do you effect change at the community level to advance restiveness and youth violence? How do you help the young people get focused? Because I believe from home, the life starts. What we want the nation to be starts from home. And the traditional council has a lot to do to regain values and moral. So what's your partnership? with the grassroots people, the mothers, the fathers. Because in the council, you have your council chiefs that represents each community that you govern. So that's the first stage of governance, like you mentioned during your lecture time. So what's your role in activating this, bringing the past, like you said, to be today? Bringing the youth of the past to today's youth. 
bringing the mothers of the past to today's mothers, bringing the fathers of the past to today's fathers that will form a better government and leadership for their country and Africa at large. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the question. Um, slightly, it has a bit to do with one question that was asked before. And this is exactly why some traditional rulers will say we need constitutional law. Because you see, in times past, when they did have these constitutional laws, when they were at the forefront of their communities before powers were taken away from them and then given to local governments, all of these aspects that you're talking about were present. But at the point where the government itself wants to reduce the powers of traditional rulers, then at the same time wants to turn back to the traditional rulers and say, help us, it becomes difficult. You see, one of the things that I didn't agree with in the West was the removal of discipline from parents. When I was in school, if I misbehaved, I was caned. Corporal punishment. The fact that we have taken this away from society, the fact that in society today, in the United States and in England, your child can actually sue you. Your child can have you arrested. You take powers away from the parents, you take power away from the traditional institutions, then how do you now discipline the younger generation? The traditional rules can only go as far as the government allows. The closer the traditional rules are with the government, the more we're able to do. But you see, if a case comes to my palace and I enact a decision, and that decision is said by the government not to be binding, then what stops them from knowing that the decision was correct, but because they don't like the decision, running to the first court of global instance? The government has to be willing to give back some powers to the traditional rulers. I grew up in England. This is not England, this is Africa. We cannot develop in Africa in the same way that they developed in America, in the same way that they developed in England. As much as I have my morals and my wars and my instances from England where I grew up, being back in Africa after 21 years, I have understood that the psychology of the UK cannot be compared to the psychology of Nigeria. They're two different things. The way that a parent would deal with the child here, I mean, if, if you try to tell the child here, uh, time out, go and stay in the corner. <laughs> Good luck to you. Good luck to you. So you see, Government and the traditional institution, we have to genuinely sit down and partner each other and understand the roles that we expect each other to really come to grips with. The traditional institution has an amazing network and attributes. But where the traditional institution at the will of the government can be disrupted and every traditional ruler is afraid to talk, even when he knows the correct thing to do. I am not one of those. Many governors will tell you, and my former governors will tell you, I speak my mind. If I believe you to be my friend, if I believe you to be my leader, if I believe you to, my, to be my governor or my president, I must tell you the truth. I don't care what you're going to give me. I don't care what you're going to do. My first interest is the people. I'm not interested in the rich and the big and powerful. They all have their escape avenues. The people I'm interested in is those who cannot escape. After a government gives his speech and says whatever he wants to say about maybe open grazing or any other 
other issues like this, the government gets into his car, surrounded by his DSS, surrounded by his police, and soon, off they go. Now the poor farmers are left behind, looking at herders, because of an open grazing problem. An open grazing problem that would be better dealt with if we sit down and stop shouting at each other and start to talk. So, my dear princess, there are so many things that the traditional institution could do, but to be able to do them, we need the government to allow us to breathe, to allow us some form of discipline. A system whereby decisions that are taken in the palace are respected by the local government chair, are upheld by the state government. This would go a long way in freeing up time for the local government and for the state to address other matters while traditional leaders at the local level can handle some issues as well. Good morning, Your Majesty. It is only today that I have proven that same that some people are born with golden silver spoon in their mouth. <laughs> only today. Congratulations, Your Majesty. My question is, Your Majesty, do you have a problem of traditional title or the traditional rulers that you meet? to discuss burning issues of national importance in this country. At what interval do you sit? And what is responsible for some of our monarchs becoming armchair? Because when you delivered your lecture here, it, it is really very, very impressive that you have to work to Mr. President to discuss your community problem. You go to see the Chief of uh, Defense Staff, you go to see the Director of SSS, IG of Police, and everybody to ensure that your community get the best. Why are other monarchs being armchair? They don't move. I, don't, I think it is good during these your forums to be able to enlighten them. You have to move. As you said, you cannot sit down and things will happen. Thank you, Your Majesty. Well, uh, recently I came under attack in my own state because I made a comment when I went to go and see the Guru Bori and I stated that myself and the Guru Bori were first class traditional rulers going from Western region to Midwestern region to Bengal state to Delta State. Some of my colleagues took it in the wrong way. When I say first class traditional rulers, you have to understand that there are some, this is a huge country, well over 200 million people. There are some kingdoms that are very, very old. These institutions go back hundreds, thousands of years. I only just recently learned that the Castilla monarchy is thousands of years old. I did not know this before. The Empire of Benin is thousands of years old. Ife, Agua. Some of the institutions that we have in the traditional institution are young. They are not as well developed. This is not to degrade them. This is not to put them down. I respectfully watched as the Emir of Khan, who is one of the most powerful kings in this country. Every time he entered the Sultan's room, he removed his shoe. Why? Because this is the Sultan. He's the head of the Sultan Khan. And it doesn't matter how rich the Emir of Khan is, it doesn't matter how powerful the Emir of Khan is, this is the Sultan. Some 
sadly, in other parts of the country, we have situations where the monarch of the town is beholden to whoever is the richest person. So, if the monarch's younger brother is richer than him, you'll find the monarch signing up to greet his younger brother. I have some very powerful people in my kingdom that don't seem to have any respect for me because they believe that they're older than me. And I will take that from them. I will stand my ground because I am not Benjamin Kikinishuku. I am the day of Agua. <laughs> if I were not the day of Agua, I must as an African have total and absolute respect for my elders. But as the day of Agua, I am the oldest man in my team. Being the oldest man has not been fun. It's not been fun at all. As soon as I got back, I cannot go to parties. I cannot go outside. My people will be telling me to get married. I should marry, I should marry. But then they'll say, no, women cannot come here. Women cannot enter here. But you must get married. So you say women cannot enter the palace, but I should get married. I beg. Tell me now how, how I go do it. <laughs> so eventually it was when I went to the United States of America, almost like any of you coming to America, that's where I found my wife. <laughs> so you see, it's not always easy for the traditional rulers themselves. If you have a community that chooses money over tradition, it becomes difficult for that tradition to well. The traditional rulers normally do mean well. But once as a traditional ruler, you start to become partisan in politics, we're finished. I have been accused of being an APC supporter, being a PDP supporter. It's very, very foolish for you to say so. I couldn't give a damn what party you belong to. The owner of Ife, Sijuani, many years ago, once said to me, I thought, I can't remember how he put it, he said the traditional rulers are any party in government. Uh, and it's the truth. Because my own is to support Mr. President is to support the policies of my state government, to support the policies of my federal state government. Many, many years ago, I had problems with my girl to state government, Libori, because I was caught between Abbasandra and Libori. I would try and advise my state government, look, this is Mr. President. You've taken an oath to Mr. President. Do not fight the President. He wasn't happy with that. Then I would go to Obasanjo. Obasanjo would ask me how was things in the state. I would tell him, well, things are a bit difficult. He would now get angry and now call Liguri. Oh my God. I'm just caught between these two powerful men. But because of my background, and whether you like it or not, not everybody has that background. I am coming from a country where I have the right to petition my Prime Minister. And no matter how lowly you are in England, the Prime Minister has to answer you. You have the right to accost the Prime Minister in public. Of course, if you try to attack the Prime Minister like this foolish man did in France, then you will go to jail, and so should you be in jail. The president, the governor, represents the state, represents us as a people. Yes, there is a forum for the traditional rulers to be able to be. That forum, of course, as you know, is headed by the Sultan of Sokoto and the Union of Defense as co-chairman. 
they meet, and they meet often enough. Of course, we could meet more often. But another thing that sadly happens amongst our traditional leaders is even when we might know what to say and do, many of us decide to keep quiet because once again, nobody wants to be removed by the same level. I couldn't care less about that because why would the state governor remove something that he didn't create? I have no fear of being removed by my state governor because I know that my hands are clean. I have no skeletons in my closet. So I can be as confident as I need to be with my state governor because my state governor should know I am totally behind him every step of the way. And if I see him doing anything that I don't like, I will never embarrass my state governor, I will never embarrass my federal state, my federal president, in public. Why? Because I have access to go and see him privately. If you want a sure way to upset any human being, correct them in public. Embarrass them in public you will soon see their bad side. Nobody likes to be embarrassed. And I think I've been able to manage 21 years that I've been here. Though I've had disagreements with many government officials, and I stand by my ground, but all of those disagreements have been private. If I have a problem with anybody, I think that the mature thing to do is to approach that person one-on-one -on -one and discuss through your problem. If you deal with things like that, you will truly understand that the problem you thought that you had is not actually there. It's just miscommunication, it's misunderstanding. So once again, my dear friend, as they say, all five fingers are not equal. Not everybody is the same. Where I might be able to stand up and take questions, or say certain things to my governor, or sit before my president as I did in 2015, and know that some of the things that I had to say to Mr. President, he was not all too well comfortable with. But as far as I'm concerned, he's my president. So I owe him my opinions. I owe him what I can see. I have to be his eyes, I have to be his ears. If we all can do that, and we all can remember, if Nigeria disintegrates, there will no longer be any Dangote. If Nigeria disintegrates today, the richest man in Africa, within a week, will no longer be the richest man in Africa. None of you will have positions anymore if this country disintegrates. There will be no more generals. There will be generals without troops. So we really have a problem in the country that we must face. I believe that this is one of the greatest nations that has ever been put together. We have the problems that we have because Nigerians are very strong-minded. And at the moment, that strong-mindedness is being used in a negative way. Okay? We can use that strong-mindedness in a positive way. Okay. I've just spent, as I said, almost the past two months, especially within the past week and a half that I've been in Kano, constantly in meetings with the Sultan of Sokoto, constantly in meetings with the Emir of Kano and some of the other traditional leaders that came to see them. And I can tell you that all of us want the best for this country. a disconnect somewhere because we all have the feeling that we're talking about the states and the federal are not necessarily listening. The same thing with our politicians. We're all talking but we don't seem to be listening to each other. We need to do something different and we need to do something different fast. So my dear, once again, not every traditional ruler can act. The federal government, the state government,
government is going to have to pinpoint and recognize those traditional rulers who are willing to act and simply take their hands and walk ahead with them. As we move forward, the rest of them will gain confidence and will come along eventually. Not all the children in your house can be as brilliant as the most brilliant. You encourage the most brilliant and you hope that that example will eventually rub off on the rest of the children. We all must work together for a better Nigeria. That's just the only way, gentlemen. And I hear my I saw a document that was flying around 
a bit earlier this year, that enters our WhatsApp every now and again. Being that somebody like myself, I didn't grow up in this country, when I first saw the document, and this document, I'm sure everybody has seen it, it goes through the list of industries that we used to have in Nigeria. The first time I saw it, I had to sit down. I was flabbergasted. How had we gone from such a robust economy to importing everything? Absolutely everything. How could we have so many private debts and our economy is so weak? We need to get our priorities straight. I believe strongly in the Almighty God, in the Almighty God. I believe strongly that God has put enough on this earth that everybody should be able to live comfortably. I know that Nigeria is a very rich and blessed country. Just recently, with my guardian brother here, just recently, I think it's the uh, one of these UAE or so has just given our free visa travel to to UAE, whereas we did not even appear on the list. What's going on, Nigeria? How much longer are we going to continue to descend down this hole? Nobody's coming to help us, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody. I'm sure you've seen the problem that the USA has just landed themselves in the last kind of time. That's a huge problem. The UK has its problems. Europe has its problems. We are on our own. And I'm sorry to say this. We don't need them. Nigerians are some of the most intelligent. Just have an argument with a Nigerian. You know how intelligent he is. You go to bed with a very, very big headache. They can argue with you from morning to night. Send a Nigerian anywhere in the world. Don't give him anything. No money, no bag, nothing. Send him somewhere. You know what happens? It's a way. Take a Nigerian anywhere in the world. If you can drive in Nigeria, you can drive anywhere. But on a more serious note, this is to show our godliness. This is to show how unique Nigerians are. There's no way that you would feel like they fear Nigerians in the continent of Africa. No way. Because you will know very, very well. When a Nigerian man is rich and has money, he doesn't care. There's nobody that can tell him anything. And this is a country that has produced many, many millionaires. But whereas we have a situation where each millionaire wants to be the only millionaire in his village. Guess what? Your village will remain a village. If you want to take your village from hamlet to village, from village to town, from town to city, you as the first millionaire in the hamlet must be willing to help your brothers and sisters around you also become millionaires. You cannot do it on your own. And if you try to, you will grow old very quickly. The stress will be too much. We need one another. If only we can focus and get electricity right in this country. Do you know what that would do for this nation? We are looking at our youths as a problem. They're not a problem, they're our biggest assets. But sadly, in an environment where they know that 
once they go to school, they finish their university degree, there's no job. And they have to look back at the village and know that with no job, mommy and daddy has just spent all their money to send them to school. Mommy and daddy don't have jobs. And they're looking to you to find money. And there's no money to find unless you go into 419. Unless you go into Yahoo Yahoo. Then you're going to get a shopping, a shopping. I don't want to see any more hush puppies. Hush puppy had a very nice one. I'm sure you enjoyed all his fancy cars, and his nice hotel. And I'm very sure that he's going to enjoy the nice new hotel he's going to enter for the next 20 years for being a very wicked man who has stolen other people's money. If you can imagine a thief being so angry that somebody else stole money from him. <laughs> can, you, can, can you imagine the hypocrisy? Instead of to live and let live. <laughs> no, he wants the police to help him lock up. Ridiculous. Very ridiculous. And this is why sometimes people say I'm very troublesome. A lot of just says, hey, you are very, very troublesome. I said to Daddy, I said, Daddy, I learned it from you now. <laughs> your most troublesome child is your most intelligent child. Just guide him. Give this country electricity and you will see all of these are who are who boys. They will put down on the ceiling. Because without electricity, the common Lagos boy, just one Lagos boy will have like 20 kk. You can't register them. Government, you will get tax for all of these registrations. The common Yahoo boy will put down and go and open five, six barbershops. That all the big men will even want to go to. Electricity is too vital to us here in this nation. Once again, I cannot understand how I was made the Chancellor of the West African Union University and I left Nigeria. No flight there, so I had to go by road. First and foremost, I was just so saddened and shocked when I saw the state of the Badagri Road. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And of course, because I had sirens blaring, the poor people of Badagri decided I was a government official. The abuses, the cursing. I wanted to write my bill of rights. I have a traditional rule of the government. But I don't blame them. But the most annoying thing for me was at one point when I was going through all, all the bumpy roads, all of a sudden there was smooth road. I mean, I did. I said, what's happening? I said, we left Nigeria. Uh, we're not in, uh, I said, what? Smooth road. Then I now got to the new republic. And I was afraid. I thought something had happened. Because no population. I left the massive population of Nigeria behind. I went to a country that hardly has a large population at all. So the country is so quiet. But in that quietness, I realized that everywhere I was looking, there was light. There was electricity. And my first night there at the hotel, there was no neighbor that took light. And I was quite shocked. 
and then later for somebody else to tell me, ah, it's Nigeria that provided us life. I said, excuse me? What, what, what do you mean by that? He said, yes, I mean, we get our life from Nigeria. I said, it's not possible. It's not possible, it's a lie. And so today I'm still trying to find out how we're providing others light. Hold on, hold on. So, I won't provide my wife with what she needs. I'll be providing girlfriend. That's divorce now. in those good old days. Uh, the war we are fighting now is another war, the security war we are fighting. Is it that we have lost all the traditional means uh, of securing our domains? Second one, sir. The confinement of chosen titles on uh, people of questionable character. Uh, many of them criminals. This type of situation emboldening other criminals. Is there not a way, sir, to uh, regulate uh, the confinement of titles on only those that are honest and that are credible? Thank you, sir. Well, once again, I grew up in England. So, I like practicality. When I first came back, they told me uh, they're going to do some medicine for me so that if bullet is fired at me, it will not enter. I said, God forbid, Mommy, take this goat, do the medicine on the goat, let me shoot the goat. If the thing doesn't work, no problem. If it works, okay, I'll consider. You now told me, no, because I'm the king. If 
I use my hand to do that. It will fold the boat. My dear, if there was traditional means, do you know how rich you would be? Do you think it would still be in Nigeria if you could make medicine that would stop doing it? Or maybe you didn't see some of those uh, this, uh, Eastern boys uh, that were shot with all their juju. Uh, I didn't think it worked. Maybe they didn't have the right juju. I don't know. But if I see you running towards me with charms, please, I would rather an AK-47 than charms. You have to be a very powerful practitioner of traditional medicine before you can do such things. And those people that I know that used to be able to do those things made a critical mistake as we make so many in Africa. They did not pass them on to the generations that are here now. Even in my community, simple things as mending bones, snake bite. Let's not forget though, we're still a remarkable people. If you get bitten by a snake in the US, be prepared for a hospital bill of between $50,000 to $250,000. But in Apple, if you get bitten by a snake, you cannot tell your dad that you won't come to the farm. That one is just to pack into the village, you pack some leaves on your leg, you will live for some few days. You're back to work. So yes, we still have some traditional practices in some areas, but where it concerns security, we're past that. We're past that. What we need is honesty in supplying the necessary equipment that our armed forces, our police, and our security personnel really need to be able to fight insurgency. Whether we like it or not, I'm sure we all were aware which president was it uh, that recently died and he had a skirmish on the borders of Nigeria with these, uh, uh, and he dealt with them within 48 hours or so. What are we talking about? If you want to deal with the problem, you'll deal with the problem. We have not yet gotten to the stage where we want to deal with the problem. Nobody stands in Nigeria's way. If Nigeria wants to deal with the problem, believe me, you will get out of the way because Nigeria will deal with that problem. I don't know why we're suffering so much. I don't know why we're allowing things to spoil so rottenly before we deal with this problem. But we must understand, we cannot allow things to continue that very way there. Or it's going to be an issue sooner or later. It's going to be an issue. Please remind me the second part of your question. Beautiful. As the gentleman earlier had mentioned, not all traditional rules are the same. You can't buy a title in my kingdom. I don't care how rich you are. The first thing I'm interested in is are you a good person or are you not a good person? Equally, I will give chief and title to somebody who does not know. As long as that person is honest and straightforward. I've often said, even if I want to give a politician a traditional title, I would prefer that that politician has finished from office first before conferring that title. So to say that it's something that's most, as you mentioned, I don't think it's most. It's very, very few places that you find that they are selling titles like that. Certainly, you will not find that in the first class 
monarchies within the, the country. So that's the same as peace. Let, let's try and understand what is monarchy. Is there really a difference between modern day prime ministers, presidents? It's the same as monarchy, it's just monarchy with democracy stashed in between. I like to say that I operate a democratic monarchy because I don't try to be an open world with my people. I like to listen to my people. I like to discuss things with my people. If I have an issue that I want to deal with, I like to walk minds with my chiefs. I like to hear from them. I like to hear different views. And I will make use of all of these views before I can finally make a decision. So even, it's not just the traditional institution. It's also the political institution. It's also the governmental institution. Sadly, countries all around the world, we find people in positions of power which should never have been there in the first place. This is one of the things that I used to love about Russell. Well, someone who can't necessarily make you a minister because he knows you or because you're his best friend, he might not give you that. You know, our person is a very basic person. I've been there where he's argued and fallen out with people because they cannot get what they want from him. So this problem is throughout the entire country. You have to be steadfast. If you want to maintain the traditional institution, you have to make sure that those that come into the traditional institution respect themselves. Recently, I had a problem with two of my chiefs in my traditional institution that people would regard to be very, very close to me. In fact, all the other chiefs believe, oh, these two chiefs can do no wrong. I had a problem with them. You know what I did? I suspended them. Because I don't care how close you are to me. If you do the wrong thing, I will deal with you. We have a government to run, ladies and gentlemen. And if we want this country to survive, we have to reinstill discipline. And we have to be prepared to do the right thing, or our institutions are not going to work. They're going to continue to fail us. Not everybody can be in government. Neither can the kind of government fix everything by itself. There's no government that can fix everything by itself. The best thing that we can do is to provide an environment whereby the normal everyday people can grow and assist the government to work through private partner partnerships, private public partnerships, through investment. This is how you must grow your nation, slowly but surely. So, as much as I'd like to answer that question for you, I cannot, because I have not experienced such thing, and kingdoms or places that do such thing I would not be very friendly with, with them. I would not be having anything to do with them at all. If you're a traditional ruler that accepts money to have cheese, then me and you have nothing in common. So I don't know where that happens. If it came to my notice, I would take the traditional ruler up as my brother and tell him, my friend, what are you doing? So everybody wants to get every kingdom. They have their way of doing things. I have my way of doing things. Some of my people think that I'm very, very difficult, that I'm very, very arrogant. I'm not as arrogant, I'm just very confident in who I am. And I'm very, very confident about what I'm saying and what I'm doing. But that same confidence that I have, if I had done even the smallest person in my kingdom wrong, I would tell him, sorry, I have no problem with telling any one of these, my Alice servants, sorry if I wrong them. It doesn't take anything away from me. There are two gentlemen here, Coco and this old man here, 
these two gentlemen served my grandfather. They served my father. This one used to drive my mother while I was in her son. He still was driving me. I still drive better than some of my young drivers today. But if he's standing and he's standing for long, I don't need him to stop walking and falling before I know that this is an old man. He cannot stand to walk. I allow him to sit down. If they have something to tell me, I will listen to them. That is what leadership is about. There is no part of your system that is irrelevant. So, where you are seeing such kingdoms going wrong, you have to speak up. All of us are part of these kingdoms that we are complaining about. If you just allow your traditional rules to do things that you know are wrong, you are not helping things. If you have access to them, go ahead and tell them the truth. Just because I'm a king does not mean that I should not be able to listen to my subject. Just make sure that you do it in a respectful manner as you talk to your father in a respectful way. I'm not sure what more I can ask from my government. 